Welcome to Circle of Hearts Radio. Journey with Grandmother Aliyah as she enters her magical world of relics, sacred sites, and ancient crystal skulls. Meet with exciting trailblazer authors and individuals shifting the consciousness of humanity. Send her your questions to be answered on air on her monthly segment, Ask the Oracle. And now your host, Grandmother Aliyah, in this sanctuary on the airwaves on Own Times Radio. Welcome to the Circle of Hearts on Om Times Radio. I am Alaya, your host for this hour. Welcome into my sanctuary, into my space. This every uh, last show of the month, I've dedicated to answering questions from guidance that are shared with me. As I've often said on these on these shows, spirit is just a very spirit guided show and being a live show sometimes you're not exactly <laughs> know what's going to be happening but uh two things happened this morning first during the week i compiled the questions that were presented to me and i don't look at them until you know a few minutes before the show and looking at these questions a lot of them were personal but i really came to realize that um, they really reflect what humanity is going through. You know, there, there's so many individual people and crises and questions that this sampling of questions just randomly sent to me really um, reflect what our present situation in humanity is. And then secondly, this morning, I was talking to a friend, Dave Miller. He had called me. He was having a uh, memorial event for a friend of ours who had passed last year, Nadine Bergeron. She was known as Beautiful Shining Woman. And her, you know, her transition was um, definitely a surprise to many. She, she had gone the nickname you know, beautiful, shining woman, because that's what she was. You know, when you're in her presence, she had the most radiant smile constantly. And she was she was a musician. She uh, various, you know, the harp and the flute. And her heart energy, wherever she played, you know, she just lit up a room. And she's greatly missed. And many people are getting together, you know, to share memories, to keep her energy alive because she's she's so much she has really affected their lives so deeply. And it made me realize that it's a shame when sometimes when a person is alive, they don't <clears throat> they're not seen or they don't really get recognition. But she was very happy to just play her music where she could and just to bring happiness into people's lives. So Nadine, I know you're with us on a different level and you're still touching many hearts. And I dedicate this show to you, your spirit, your smile. And toward the end of the show, there there's, was a question about soul contracts. And I'm going to bring in, after that answer, how Nadine and I met, and this was our soul contract, and how she affected my life. I've had many wonderful people support me in getting me out into the public, and she was one of them. So let me get to uh, the start of these questions, and um, because they're really very, very important. Now, one of them was from a a listener and a friend who was one of the first indigo spiritual warriors to be incarnated on the planet. When I say this particular indigo wave is souls that incarnated with a definite purpose. 
And many of us are up in age and, you know, have lived through many challenges and many of us are tired. And this kind of goes to my friend because I know she's she's gone through so many things and she just feels kind of lost and she just wanted some guidance and what was presented to me and what I've heard is just you know, she says, what is my purpose? You know, people around, you know, friends are, you know, transitioning. You know, she's, I've moved back from my client list because, you know, I don't feel as effective. And you really, my friend, as a light worker, you need this time to take for yourself and nourish your body and soul. You often say you walk between the astral, between worlds, and you're, you're wondering what is your purpose now? And to fully integrate yourself into this world, this 3D plane, and to be the portal of energy you are, you have connected heaven to earth. You know, you've, you've made beautiful um, essences, and, you know, your healing has helped many many people and right now all you need to do is to take care of your form and not worry is there something special in my am i being called to do you are because you are anchoring in many worlds many dimensional worlds together your little spot you know in your home in Australia, is you're you're bringing forth um, all the dimensions. You know, you're bringing parts of Lemuria back and anchoring it. You know, the the beautiful golden essences and healing, and so many other things. So that this is where you're being guided. Don't worry about what you need to do for others. Right now, you need to do for you and to take care of you. And sometimes just not think, just, just to be that you're, you're surrounded by many beautiful crystals and many beautiful energies and the beauty of the land and just to be a point of light right now. That in time, I think you're going to be given more direction of what to be doing. But at this particular time, you're so tired, which is reflective of many of the light workers on this planet. We're tired and saying, how much more can we handle? What are we really supposed to do? Maybe I don't want to be here. Maybe I should leave. No, your purpose in staying is to be here to be the lights for other people, that other people can reach out to you for answers. So that's why I mean, a simple question of guidance for a personal reason has really shown itself as a guidance for many weary spiritual seekers who are tired and really, you know, don't know where they should be doing or if you know, they're at a low. And right, right now is a little bit time of nurturing yourself because after the spring equinox, I think be more and more people are going to be awakening and you're going to be very needed, not in a needy way, but in shining your light, people will be able to find themselves in you. So again, that guidance for you, my friend, is to nurture yourself and not look for answers. Because we know you're one very deeply spiritual lady and those answers are within you. Right now, you're so tired, you're blocking everything. So take care of your form. Be the light on this planet that you have chosen soul wise to stay here and to continue to work and as you integrate more 
the next wave of guidance will come. And I really do believe it will be after the spring equinox. So I hope this offers some advice to the other, all others in this world that are fearing so tired and leery right now and just saying, I don't know what to do anymore. Now is the time to take care of you. If you feel at a point of being blocked, it's because your your soul is saying you need to step back. You need to stop worrying about fixing the world. You need to find your center, to find your own peace, and just to be the, the love and the light that you are. Now, this is important because as so many people are awakening, it's almost like all these little flowers are, are just all popping open, all these little lotuses of souls are, you know, just awakening. They need to see other people that are awakening. They need some guidance because everything is so confused right now that um, you, you need to be a center and you need to be that point of light that people can reach out for. Now, having all said all of that, I'm noticing that we're going to be heading into our first break, you know, with some messages. So ponder on that thought because there's that sense of oneness that, you know, we're all reaching for, that we all need to be there for each other because as some awaken, we bring up the other ones that are awakening. You know, it, it's just we, everybody's raising their vibrations together. And where there's confusion, we need to offer our hearts to those people so that they can join us. I'll be back in a few minutes with our, my next question. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. The Conscious Parenting Radio Show provides inspiration and resources for loving, empowering, and respecting your children and yourself. Join me, Timothy, every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time as we consciously explore proven ways of living together in happiness, health, and harmony. Radio Namaste leads you down the yellow brick road into portals of consciousness with the Blue Collar Goddess as your host. Interviews with humans who could be famous or just popular, and answers to everything are on the agenda. Tune into Om Times Radio and drop in on Thursdays at 3 Eastern. It's a different brand of enlightenment. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Home Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Well, I'm back in that first 15 minutes flew by, so I, I realize I'm going to have to speed up my little guidance here. <laughs> the next question happens to be interesting. It's from one of my daughters about my grandchild. And it's really reflective of the crystal children that are out there. Um, 
the crystal children, you know, part of the wave of it is is a lot of the young ones coming into being pre teenagers, you know, really finding themselves, and uh, both, you know, it's a dualistic life for them. You know, they they deal with things, you know, every day, you know, problems of pre teenagers and hormones, etc. But also, we we're looking at them as trailblazers, you know, children that are really very old souls that have their own minds. They may be in their a young body, which, you know, gives a lot to rebellion and difficulties and uh, not wanting, you know, we're going to say, you know, this is my world now and this is, you know, how I want it. I'm not really going to listen to my parents. But as parents, Sometimes we have to realize um, just to, you know, to give them guidance, to give them structure, but also allow them to realize the uh, responsibility of their words and actions, you know, to say, well, all right, this is, you know, a situation, you know, that you have in your life and realize how you react to it or, you know, what words you put out or how your relationships go. You're responsible for it. That I can't, you know, I as a parent, I can't make it right. But I'm here to guide you and to, you know, help you through it. And I think this is an important part with helping these crystal children grow up right now. Because sometimes they get themselves, as my daughter said, will the drama ever end? Well, I like her to look at it. Whose drama is it? Is it the girl, all the children involved? Or is it part of her drama that she's projecting on it? That if she gives my granddaughter, you know, the structure, which she is, She's giving her structure and rules to live by, you know, to get along in this world. That uh, my granddaughter realizes that she's created some things by not being clear enough to other people. Then she also has to make it right, that nobody else can make it right for her. So... On another show, we're going to really get uh, into the crystal children, but I thought I'd just touch upon that. And uh, my daughter asked for guidance because she knows that I, as her mother and as, you know, a grandparent, I get emotionally involved. But in this way, I can step back and maybe give a little bit clearer picture. Now, to bring up another question as I'm moving along here, um, it was brought up from another friend. They go, you know, life is so difficult. And do the question was, do I concentrate or focus? Where do, what do I do first? Focus on my personal life or my professional life? Because I know somehow it's all intertwined. But which do I focus on first? Well, the, the whole thing is, from perspective of guidance, is to focus on you. Because you make the changes within. You know, you find, find your own happiness. Um, set your own goals. Now, I know you also are, you know, working through the positive affirmations. But another hint is... You create your world around you. So this is why I say focus on your personal wants. Write a list of maybe five, seven, what you want in life. And really look at it and see, after you write it down, then see which ones you can rewrite as far as uh, put them in numerical order once you think you can succeed at or manifest quickly. With So if you have one to seven, you might have number seven, your, that goal, you put it first. 
because as you see you you manifesting your goals through positive thinking and changes of your thought and to realize you're a special soul and all the imprinting you've gone from the past well maybe you're not good enough or maybe um you shouldn't do this and stuff it doesn't matter what matters is what's inside you and what you know in your heart you are and this is why i brought out this question because a lot of people face this so many people have such negative imprinting constantly thrown at them that they truly forget that the very special beings that you are spirit and you are the ones that create the change in your own life but you have to repattern your brain you have to constantly put out words there and the important part is to believe them and to feel that you're worthy of them just don't do the the lip you know sink or you know uh, repeat things and not believe them so a little soul searching is involved here by putting out a journal and putting listing a certain amount of goals you want to manifest in your life and work through them you'll see your life changing that's why i say focus on you first and everything else will start to fall in place around you now again we're almost done with the second segment. <laughs> time really flies. So give me a little bit of time to digest on that and um, realize a lot of these questions that I'm asked, even though they may be personal of nature, can you, you see what's going on here? How many other people in their lives are facing similar things? So that's why I say every, at the end of every month, I do these shows and to contact me whether on the uh on the radio page at circle of hearts or i'm on facebook um there's a lot of links on ohm radio on times radio on the circle of hearts page there are links where you can get hold of me write your questions because they may seem personal but they really reflect what's going on in the world. And by being able to answer them, you're helping somebody else also. Again, remember, we're all one. We really are. We're all, all humanity is one. We're all spirit. So, um, again, what's your thoughts or questions? Never be afraid to put them out there. I do not use names. But, you know, you're helping yourself and you're also helping somebody else in the world. This is, um, oh, it's interesting. I'm not going to commercial, so we'll keep on talking here right now. I'm beginning to wonder if I had dropped a call here. So I'm fiddling around with Skype. So if you, if you are listening, if I'm still on the air, bear with me. <laughs> I think I have a little bit of a problem here with Skype at the moment. Maybe they can't, you know, Skype's having a little problem with the energy of the universe coming through here. So, uh, all right. Well, I'll keep on talking and, you know, hope we're still connected here. 
the next question that I'm going to put out as you know was from um, another one another friend that had said that they're going through a lot of physical ascension symptoms and um, they're ex you know the dark exactly sh you know the person is in good health but they're going through a lot of um, restless leg fatigue and um, you know a whole morale a whole list of symptoms and, you know what is really going on well, of course it's always good to check with you know your physicians with us but you know I can go and give you some answers as far as energy wise with you know what is happening at the time um, we are being you are energy your energy and form you're a conglomeration of all molecules that have assembled into a thought form, your energetic body. And realize that all the outside energy around you is also affecting you. And also, you know, you're getting down low spiritually. So your form is constantly morphing and being um, blasted with outside influences, being blasted with spiritual influences. And um, a lot of the ascension symptoms that you are feeling are is downloads of energy from source that are, are helping you to awaken. But in the process, all your chakras are being Realign. Oh, I guess I still I still am on air, so I guess Skype will finally cooperate. I'll continue it when we come back. of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Simone Millicis would like you to know that business can be fun, which is why she wrote the book, Joy of Business. What if you could have the joy of business rather than the stress and struggle? Most of the time, the only thing stopping you from a thriving business is you. In the Joy of Business book, Simone gives you access consciousness tools and pragmatic ways to get out of your own way and to create the business, life, and living you know is possible and beyond what this reality says is achievable. Business is joy. It's creation. It's generative. It can be the adventure of living. You can purchase your copy of the book through Amazon or Joy of Business website, www.accessjoyofbusiness.com. Hi, this is Sylvia Henderson, Intuitive Life Coach and Energy Healer. Are you ready to elevate and rise way above your normal? Be sure to listen to my show, Intuitive Transformations, on Own Times Radio, Sunday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern. Get the inspiration you need to transform your life. Hi, my name is Monica, and I'm the host of Co-Creating Now. Give yourself an opportunity to connect with your all-knowing higher self, and manifest joy, love, and peace together every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Eastern. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Free your mind, expand your soul. Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Well, I'm back, and doing a live show is really fun because you never know what's going to happen with the electronics. You know, before, I think Skype dropped me, so it was quite the, the frantic thing of trying to find a way of getting back and then getting back and not sure if I was on. But then when we got to commercial, okay, I guess, you know, I managed to get back on, and, you know, I heard hope 
that you heard some of um, the answers to the questions I was giving. So thanks for hanging in there with me. <laughs> it, this is a process, and it's kind of funny. But here we are again. All right, so to the person that asked about the uh, the physical symptoms they're experiencing, like I said, what I can tell you, again, is, you know, of course, go through, always check with, you know, your doctor if there's something that you're not sure of. But what I can show you in, is from a different perspective, your energetic body, which is, like I said, light. And if you think of yourself, you are a thought form made up of all these light molecules and atoms, all kinds, all compressed to uh, create this body of yours and how you're being affected by the spiritual downloads and the solar flares. So, of course, your body is going to sometimes be overcharged by the energies that are coming through you as you ground them into the earth. And some of the result is the extreme fatigue. This is spiritual ascension symptoms. As, you know, um, with the fatigue, your body needs rest to replenish itself. You could be the healthiest person physically, you know, uh, the doctor's standards and being go to these bouts of extreme fatigue. And what should you do? If you need rest, you take rest. And don't feed into, well, is there something mad or not? Your body tells you what it needs. When you have the maybe the um, restless arm or leg syndromes, it's very difficult uh, to experience these, you know, it's a sensation of, um, it's like, you know, your arms and legs are sometimes not being able to control them, you know, to have them either these little jumping effects or as if they're being shocked. Well, in a way you are, because your body, your nerves are your electrical system. So when you get all these spiritual downloads, you really are being shocked in little different ways. Now, what can you do about it? I would suggest that you look up restless legs. And there's a lot of, uh, find the information out there and feel what is right intuitively to you. Some people use minerals. Some people use homeopathic remedies this is where you need to listen to your body and your own intuition. This is just a different pers perspective at looking at these, you know, a way of looking at this. Also, a lot of people are going through a, a kind of lean rising, which is your chakras being opened up, you know, from the sacral part and uh, this energy. You know, so the ancients used to equate it to, you know, a snake. Or if you look at the Cadeus, you know, the snake intertwined and reaching, you know, out. It's, it's this energy wave which goes through all your chakras and opens them up, clears blockages, emotional blockages and stuff. So there's a lot going on. But this is, the internet provides a lot of information on Kundalini and on certain ascension symptoms. And all in all, if your health is good and you're going through a lot of this, realize it's, you are being rewired spiritually. There's a lot of adjustments going on in this physical body of yours that we call ascension symptoms. But the whole thing is, again, if you're not sure, go to your doctor. And if um, you're in very healthy, well then also, then, you know, look at these 
as an ascension systems or things that you're spiritually growing from. Your, your body is changing into a crystalline, more light. But uh, sometimes it needs to be replenished with certain either minerals or, you know, like natural herbs or you need to do the research. And there's a lot of information out there. And like I said, listen to your own body. You will find what is right for you. So I, this that's a very broad range uh, question that, you know, others can also apply to themselves. Now, one of the last questions that we're going to go into is, I was asked, how do I find my soul contract? Well, basically, a soul contract is, let's start at the beginning. We are facets or sparks of light called souls that spring forth from source itself. Prior to incarnating into this planet or into the particular lives, we choose our parents. We choose, We make an outline, basically, and say, okay, this is you know, maybe what we would like to accomplish. And, you know, our contracts with other people, well, maybe this person or this soul will enter my life to help me become aware of this or, you know, to another person may come into your soul to give you the gift of maybe challenges. And I know we don't see challenges as it is a gift, but in facing challenges, we grow spiritually. So that person, in many ways, is not your enemy. It is, it's a gift of enlightenment, a gift of understanding. Okay? All soul contracts are choices. Now, someone had brought up Akashic Records. Well, Akashic Records present a broad view of all that there is around your spiritual light. But since we always, we have, the soul has the important task of making choices, we constantly change. So if you ask what a soul contract is, is look at your life now. What is around you? What have you manifested? What have you chosen on a deeper level to do? And the thing is, if you don't like it, you can make a choice again, now, consciously, and say, well, I'm going to change my life. And how do you change this? You go deep within yourself. And you you see what you like. You don't. You know, look at where you don't look. Look at the fears you have faced. These are all gifts of soul growth, fears. I know many people don't see it that way, but it really is. Because once you face your fears, you become stronger. So to view what is around you immediately right now, this is your soul contract. You manifested this. You, you came in. You created this. And you take responsibility for it. Because then, if you don't like something, you can choose to do things differently. Now, this is one way of looking at things. Or if people come into your life at different times, again, realize this is, again, a soul contract. Uh, this isn't, you know, somebody from... These, these are aspects of yourself, aspects of source that are working with you to bring you to that sense of oneness, to make, help you find your soul path, directions that you go. But in all this, you always have the choice to change. And that's why you always hear the expression, be the change that you want to see in the world. And um, by recognizing this, it releases you from victimhood. 
of well, the world's against me because you you came into this life, into this planet, into this time period to experience different experiences. And once you have and to consciously understand this, then you can move on from it. You don't have to keep on repeating the patterns because that's basically what karma is. You you don't get it in this life, so what happens? You choose at you know at the end of this life, you know, when you you pass on and you decide to come back again. It may be different circumstances, but You'll have to learn the same old pattern. Now, taking, you know, working off the idea of soul contracts is, again, when I met Nadine, uh, she has greatly affected my life. And it is uh, an experience of somebody coming into your life rather unexpectedly, but yet someone that you feel that you have known at different times and how they have affected you very deeply. Um, now we come, we'll be coming up to a, a break shortly, but I'll keep on talking until we do that, then we'll continue about this. Um, she's in, like I said, Nadine is someone that uh, has supported me in pulling me basically out of the closet into the public eye and saying, you know, you need to do this, and I'll be here with you to help you get started. And in talking to other people that know her, she's pretty much done the same thing for many, many people. And she was just such a gentle soul. She wasn't one that was constantly saying, okay, I'm here. You know, this is what I'm going to tell you. Right, as we go into the break, we'll continue our journey with Nadine afterwards. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Hi, I'm Katrina Kavanagh, host of the I Am Wisdom radio show. I Am Wisdom is about the connection between mind work and energy work, spirituality and living a wonderful life. Looking forward to sharing each Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with you. Know what to do, just can't figure out how to fit it all into your busy life? It doesn't have to be that way. Hi, I'm Ellen Baysberg from Seamless Life. Join me every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on Home Times Radio and learn the how of conscious living. Let me and my guests help make your life seamless. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Well, I'm back again. And, you know, during this break, I was thinking about, you know, people are probably wondering, why am I using Nadine here? Well, mostly because I can't get to the event or the memorial that she's um they're having for her this afternoon so i told dave well i'm going to share a bit about her on air because she's one of those special souls that enter your life like again it's, it's like a soul contract that does something to change your life around 
And by example, in sharing this little bit of a journey with Nadine, I want you all to look at your own life and realize people that have entered your life surprisingly, maybe out of the blue, maybe they're an internet friend, maybe they're, you know, a speaker or somebody that, you know, you were drawn to. Nothing happens by accident. Your spirit is constantly in control, directing your own growth on this planet. Because as you meet people and you grow, thus the change within you helps people to recognize something in themselves. So uh, this is really what soul, soul contracts is a complicated subject to try and bring out in a short period of time. But that's what I'm, you know, trying to show you with, you know, the story about Nadine. Um, briefly, because time does go so quickly here. A few years ago, like I said, for, uh, I rarely go out in public mostly because of my own disabilities makes it hard for sometimes for me to be in public or to um, be among crowds. But um, I had gone, what was it, uh, a few years ago, I went to an event, uh, a fair, a festival up in northern Jersey. And Nadine was there. She was providing some of her beautiful music to, you know, to the event. And I was off on my own little side, my own little booth there. Not sure what I was doing as usual. But I also had told, told the organizer, Cher, that I would do a little bit of a talk. And Nadine came over and she goes, I remember you. And, I, you know, I'm looking at her because I really didn't remember. She goes, oh, you know, you were at the Kindred Fair, which was a, is a big fair in New Jersey, you know, a few years ago. She, I was part of the, uh, the music. You know, we had our band there. And I saw you there with your crystal skull. And she goes, the white tar. And she goes, that skull just like a beam drew me in. And she goes, I didn't get a chance to talk to you because, you know, we had to do a upcoming set. But she goes, your crystal skull, you know, that, that light, it affected my life so much. And I just looked at her and I said, wow, <laughs> you know, here we are, you know, we're brought together by, you know, a crystal skull. So I did my talk, and then she just spontaneously, you know, went around in a circle, you know, while I'm, you know, showing the people the crystal skull, and people are, you know, holding it. You know, she did the drum, and, you know, she did what Nadine does, you know, with her beautiful music, and, you know, sometimes it could be her flute, or it could be her harp. And she made a very sacred space, out of this simple talk that people, when they held their skull, the, their, arm, their hands would warm up and their hearts would open up. And this is by adding her energy to mine. And then we had decided afterwards, well, she goes, we have to do this again. Now, anybody that knows me is getting me into public. It's like, you know, dragging me tooth and nails. But I said, okay, we'll do this again. And we did, and it, it was a beautiful situation, her adding her, you know, her music and her energy to it. And we continue to uh, talk periodically, oh, we're going to get together, but not, life never allowed it. And then one time I heard she was very, very ill, and then she passed, and I'm going, what happened? She has affected my life greatly in helping me feel safe coming out into the public. And listening to the other stories, 
of just how her presence and her radiant smile has um, affected people. That people, after a year of her passing, say, oh, we have to get together, we have to drum, we have to be together to share Nadine's love. And this is a very special soul that comes into your life, and we have all grown for it. So that's why I dedicated this show to Nadine, because she has helped me grow. And this is what soul contracts are. That's why I said take a look in your life and see what people have entered your life that has helped you to grow. Um, and how you have changed your life because of it. And sometimes, unlike Nadine, which was a very loving person, sometimes you run into a situation where uh, a person gives you grief or has created unhappiness in your life. But realize, again, this is a soul contract. Realize, think about all the things that happened to you in that life. And how that person challenged you. And maybe they made you angry. And maybe they made you hurt. But also look how you rose above it. That this person did not challenge you. Or make your life unhappy. You wouldn't have changed. So soul contracts are about people who can or souls that have agreed to cross your path, life's path to help either enlighten you and help you grow, or they have come to challenge you, where you may say, oh, I hate this person, but realize they've given you a gift. They've changed you somehow, and you've grown from it. And you may not see it right away, but in answering these questions about soul contract, I want you to ponder on this and really realize what has happened. And sometimes people stay angry and sometimes people don't grow. But then another person will come into their life that may open their hearts. Everything is by divine design, by soul contracts for you to experience certain things on earth. And it all equates to growing spiritually. Now, we don't normally think about these things in our daily lives, but I'm asking you to think about it now. And open your mind to it. And I think you'll see a pattern happening happening with that and when you realize people maybe the people that you've hated in life that have caused you pain when you realize they have given you these challenges that you'll be able to forgive them so there's a big process going on here and like I said to the person that asked me how do you know your soul con you know, just know what your skull contract is. Just look at life around you and look at the people around you and how you've interacted and how you've grown from them. Even in the ones that you may have had anger with uh, and in the choices you've made. And forgive the ones. Allow yourself to forgive the anger because realize they have honestly given you a gift that you don't haven't realized and forgive them and you shall move on and you shall grow from it. These are lessons I learn continuously. I am far from being perfect. There's a lot of my life I haven't understood and I have my ups and my downs myself but in my own realization, thinking about things, well, then I realized that um, this is the way it, it really is in understanding. Now, as I head toward the end 
of this show, and I thank you all for listening. Uh, just briefly, I want you to realize uh, in Marsha's lineup, we're going to be all talking, all the people that are scheduled are all Crystal Skull caretakers. They all have different uh, paths and lives, but there's that one continuity of thought of being working with the crystal skulls and we're, we're going to find out what the crystal skulls are so march is a special month it's my birth month and also my love of crystal skulls so you know i'll look we'll look forward to um the weeks ahead and again as we wind down um today before i you know came to this show i saw a video, a poem by Steve Emmerich called One Breath, a beautiful um, YouTube video that had me realize, you know, a lot of people are coming to that sense of oneness. And um, like, we have such a beautiful poem. 